Hi there, I'm Jim Henson. Uh, this is Kermit the Frog here. Hi all. And on my right, we have Frank Oz, major puppeteer, many characters, performer. And on my left is Michael Frith, who's sort of head of design of the Muppets. And what we wanted to do was sort of talk a little bit about these characters and our perception of them. And we'll just take them one by one. That he used to be more of a comic, and then when we did the Muppet show, he became more of a straight man. And uh, so he's he's kind of like the neutral character. He's the pogo of the group. Fozzie, this is not going to work. Just read it off the page, frog. Uh, leggies and jungle funds. Leggies and jungle funds. <laughs> leggies and jungle funds. All right. So my typing is bad. <laughs> Ladies and jungle friends, welcome again, Tithy Mupple Sharks. Uh, my name is Kermit the Forg. The Forg? He's one of the very simplest puppets uh, because inside of his head, there's nothing in there but my hand. And so um, it's just a little cloth pattern here. Uh, originally, he was done with a couple of ping pong balls, the eyes were, uh, so they are just half spheres. And, uh, but he's, he's very simple, as puppets go. Some of our stuff has gotten a lot more complicated, but uh, he's virtually a glorified sock puppet. <laughs> For Sculpt Kermit, mm -hmm. is that while he is so very, very simple in shape, uh, that simplicity is very deceptive, that there are extraordinary subtleties to that shape. And, uh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed, and, mm -hmm. and to the personality, and uh, especially to the humor. Um, that, you that know, as Jim, yeah. as Jim was saying, that uh, basically he is a piece of fabric wrapped around his hand. I think it's very useful in terms of puppets in general when thinking about how to translate them into other media to remember that the basic skeleton of the puppet is the human hand and arm, mm -hmm. and that whatever is going on with the puppet is very often, almost always, with some exceptions, but almost always, based around that shape. So that when you start out thinking about how to depict these characters, remember that that is the shape, that's the shape of the skull. It's very dramatically illustrated in Kermit when you look at him in profile, because you can really see the shape of the hand in there. The mm -hmm. top of the skull is a knuckle coming up there. And those little subtleties that can be done with the knuckle or with the fingers really create an extraordinary variety of expression. You ready, Kermit? Yeah. Just don't push me hard. What? Push me hard. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I'm just a little woozy, that's all. Oh, Kermit! Close the curtains! Yes! Wow! What a terrific act! Do you want a partner? <laughs> then the other thing that you learn from that is that if you do hold your arm up at a natural angle, as if you were a puppeteer, you'll find you're almost automatically at uh, maybe not quite a 45 degree angle, but, but oh, darn close kind of, to it. Yeah. Sort of lean forward. Yeah, and, and that's something that you really want to try to remember to capture, maybe not as dramatically as it is in real life, but to capture some of that feeling when you are uh, figuring out how to, how to depict this, these puppets in other media. Um, it creates a great deal of the graphic look, and you can sometimes be thrown off when you see the puppet in real life or when you see a still photograph of the puppet which isn't doing that, the look and the shape of the face is more determined by that angle than you might imagine. Now, many times people will sculpt him and so forth with the, the body absolutely straight upright. Which you almost and can't then do. then it's almost <laughs> yes. very difficult. Then Come you at the a, duck. <laughs> you get a position like that, yeah. which is looking only at the top half of, and yeah. it's... Uh, but you can't really <clears throat> operate that way. It's yeah. not, he is always on this sort of an attitude. Yeah. And you'll find when you look at some of the larger, more complex characters like uh, Piggy or Fozzie that that's not as apparent, uh, but it's there, and it's very much a part of their look when you're trying to recreate them. So just in terms of the graphic, trying to capture that graphic, I think that's a very important consideration. As a, as a character, he's always kind of easygoing. He's very likable. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, he's sometimes slightly uh, a wise guy. Genus, but, you know, I, I was born in this swamp. My, my roots are there, and I, and I just wanted you and my other friends to see it. But uh, we don't have to go back to the swamp. We can, uh, we can go to back where to, where to where you were born. The sty. You know, where your roots are. Where pigs eat swill and wallow in the mud. Remember that? Huh? The kinds of jokes and humor he does is usually fairly gentle. Um, you 
know, s some of the other characters, Piggy can be quite abrasive, but his humor generally has to be in a very sort of gentle, likable sort of style. Of hey, boss. Okay, yeah, yeah, the Prairie Dog Glee Club's ready. Oh, good. I'll schedule their number in the second half of the show. Good. Uh, uh, did you uh, talk to them about stealing, though? Yeah, but I think you better talk to them. I mean, after all, you are the head honcho. I think they'd listen to you. Okay. Hey, fellas. Uh, Kermit wants to talk to you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, listen, gang, it, it's not nice to take other people's things. You see, that's called, uh, that's called stealing, and, uh, 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 uh guys, they've taken everything. <laughs> Gee, boss, I've never seen you naked before. Kermit, uh, holds things together. Uh, he's the boss and the Muppet Show. He, um, he has all these zany characters in a world around him. And he tries to be the center and hold everything together. Uh, and as Michael said, sometimes he gets too much and he, he blows his top. But essentially, he kind of goes with the flow, as it were. Uh, he sometimes needs to get away and be alone, quietly by himself, occasionally. It's of an aliveness right now. As Jim, as Jim is, uh, is sitting there, Kermit is just casually looking around as our eyes are moving around or... Mm -hmm. Uh, and just quietly uh, nodding and listening, uh, as opposed to constantly moving. I think that that's probably has a lot to say about the characters that walkabouts also, um, and in other, in other areas, they don't have to be constantly being silly, because they're rarely silly, they have a life of their own. Uh, yes, one of the most critical things about a puppet is where he's looking. Because if I'm doing a line like this, and I'm looking exactly into the camera, it's like that, okay? And then, if I'm looking above the camera, you can look above the camera and you get more of a, when I was thinking, I was looking above the lens. But on the other hand, if I want to feel sad and lonely, I generally look lower. And you get a lot of change of expression just by the, uh, the, the, just the, the angle there, nature yeah. and angle of what you're uh, yeah. holding the thing. Yeah. One of the things we tend to do with the puppets like is to ever so slightly cross their eyes so that you get a triangle. I beg your pardon. It's okay. It's all right. It's good. This is a good thing, Kermit. This is, oh, yeah? this is all right. So that you get a, a triangle coming right down across the nose that, that, that gives the eyes focus. You find if they're exactly centered in the eyeball, and, and particularly if they go off to the sides, mm -hmm. that they lose their focus completely. So we tend to just slightly shift inward, and that really helps, uh, particularly when looking into a camera, to, uh, to give the character life and to make you feel that he's looking.